Here's a cool jacket. I'm going to give you a task. The task is to estimate the true dollar value of the jacket. What's the jacket really worth? Now, the main piece of information you have is the sticker price, which is $300. So you see the jacket, you see the price, and you're asked to estimate what the jacket is really worth in dollars. Now, most of us understand that retail prices are inflated because stores need to earn a profit. So most of us will assume that the sticker price is high and that the true value of the jacket is something less than $300. Maybe it's $200, maybe it's $250. Who knows? But that's the thought process, right? Now, let's consider the same question, but imagine that in your first encounter with this jacket, the sticker price was this. Retail is $600, but it's been discounted down to $300. So this is what you see. Now, when asked to estimate the true value of the jacket, what's your thought process? Well, it's the same as before, but now your first exposure is to a higher price. So your estimate is going to be anchored to this higher price. You figure it's not worth $600, so you revise downward. But how far down? Well, when you perform this experiment, these are the typical answers you get. For the $300 price tag, people anchor to $300 and revise downwards, heading somewhere between $200 and $300 usually. For the $600 price tag, discounted to $300, people anchor to the 600 and revise downwards, ending somewhere between 500 and 600. So this is the anchoring effect. You're given a question, a difficult cognitive task, in this case, to estimate what the jacket is really worth. And you're given a piece of information, a number, and your brain uses this number to simplify the task. Anchor to the number you're given and then make adjustments using whatever background knowledge you have that's relevant to the situation. Sometimes you'll adjust upwards, sometimes downwards, depending on the context and the question asked. And notice how powerful this effect is in terms of manipulating your willingness to pay for this jacket. Even though the actual purchase price is the same for both jackets, the perceived value of the jacket is much higher when the price is anchored high, and your willingness to pay is much higher, maybe twice as high. You perceive the discounted jacket as a great deal. You don't perceive the regularly priced jacket the same way. This way of manipulating consumer beliefs about the value of a product is very common, and it's used all the time in business and marketing. It's one of those principles that people in the influence business have exploited for years, long before the cognitive bias revolution in psychology. The difference is that now we have a much better understanding of why and how this works, and how it connects to broader psychological principles. I want to talk a bit more about these psychological principles, but we'll save that for the next video. The video you just watched is part of a larger course on cognitive biases and critical thinking. You can find it on Udemy. Just click the link on the screen or in the video description to get a 50% discount on the sign up. Or you can find it and many other video courses over at the Critical Thinker Academy, where you can sign up for as low as $3 a month and get access to almost 20 hours of video training on a variety of topics related to logic, argumentation, and critical thinking.